So I decided to make this video for Bill Barlow on Cloudy Nights because he had asked how this classic C8, it's a vintage 1973 C8, compared to the Edge HD. Um, so I decided to set it up here, here in the yard just to kind of give an idea of what it looks like. Uh, the serial number on this model is 313183. Uh, and the way this works is that the first digit uh, apparently represents the third quarter of the year the telescope was made. The last digit, which is three, represents 1973. And the four digits in the middle, which is um, 1318, means that it's the 1,318th model made that year. So um, <clears throat> I purchased a scope from John Bolk here on Cloudy Nights, a good friend of mine, and he's a great guy. and. You know, he told me up and down that the optics in this were good, and lo and behold, they were. You know, I was just uh, quite shocked at how good they were. I mean, really good. Um, so I did a little research, contacted Celestron to ask about what the deal was with this serial number. And apparently, during the year 1973 and 74, there was a gentleman by the name of Bob Goff, who apparently has quite a reputation. In fact, Zambudo had expressed that he was a, his, Bob Goff was his optical mentor, and um, my understanding is that uh, Bob Goff, sadly, who passed away, I think, in the 90s, um, he reworked the secondaries on these telescopes, and uh, that's one of the things that I've seen that by enhancing or uh, redoing the secondary uh, mirrors on uh, SCTs, they perform, uh, can perform better. And he had a reputation for really doing good work with the secondaries on these scopes from around 1973 to 74. Um, I have an old Telrad on here, a old University Optics Finder with a Japanese silver top plossel. Um, I use, I prefer to use inch and a quarter eyepieces, so I have a Takaji prism on the back of this uh, telescope here. This is just an Edmund 28 RKE, which is one of my favorite eyepieces. Um, the 6.3 reducer works surprisingly well visually, and uh, Bill P. on Cloudy Nights and I were talking at some point, and he's like, you know, you got to give it a try and take a look at it. And I thought, yeah, I haven't looked through 6.3 reducer in quite some time, and I was shocked. Uh, it made me realize how uh, much I had forgotten about SCTs and, you know, and, and using it this way. So it works really well, and I get about two full moon widths, so it's about a degree or so with this eyepiece in conjunction with the 6.3 reducer. The uh, little knob that you see right here in this video is just a parafocaling ring. Um, um, everything's analog on this thing. I just use a tail rad to spot the objects and then the, the right angle viewfinder to kind of find something faint and fuzzy somewhere in the field. I like all the analog uh, capabilities of the scope. I'm not really necessarily in all the bells and whistles and computers. A lot of people are into computers and whatnot. I don't really care much about that all the time. You know, I like looking around at things and I love the reliability of it and looking at one object for quite some time. Uh, you'll notice there's no optical coatings on here. The glass is very clear. Um, I did uh, remove the corrector plate and marked it and uh, just to clean uh, the interior of the glass just a little bit, put it right back on where it was. Works beautiful. Um, use Allen heads for the collimation, which I really like. So the question is, is how does it perform and um, how did it compare to the Edge HD? Well, it surprisingly did better um, by quite a bit. Um, the E and F components on the trapezium, for example, were just more stark, more obvious, more clear contrast. Like you didn't see as much scatter on the stars with uh, this particular sample. On the Edge HD that I have, uh, I would say that sample is perfectly fine for like a, you know, a, a general enthusiast who, who is happy with uh, um, an average Cassegrain, and I think that's perfectly fine. Um, for me, I want to have the best uh, optical tube I can get, and um, edge performance between the two using the eyepieces. Um, one of the things I just want to emphasize that I think people forget is that eyepieces introduce their own aberrations. If the telescope is just the camera, for example, if you're looking with a, imaging with a CCD camera, it's relying on the optics to flatten the field. Uh, 
that's not the same thing as when you add an eyepiece. So when I do tend to feel that the people on the forums go a little overboard with how sharp the Edge HD is uh, visually compared to an SCT. And my opinion, uh, based on what I've looked at, I think an SCT looks about the same equivalent as a F6 or F7 Newtonian. Um, and believe it or not, it's extremely hard to tell the difference in the edge sharpness between this, this standard SCT and Edge HD. Um, so, yeah, like I say, eyepieces can introduce their own aberrations. And that, in turn, uh, can, can give you the impression that one scope is not as good as the other. But you know, everything has to work as an uh, optical train. You know, it's not just a telescope doing everything. The eyepiece also plays a role in that. So it's just, I think it's important to remember that. Yeah, I do recommend the standard SCT for visual observation in the Edge HD if you want to do uh, uh, visual work. Or sorry, the Edge HD if you want to do uh, fo photographs. Um, the collimation on here is much easier than on the Edge HD. I asked about that with Celestron, what the deal is and why it was so tight on all the Edge HDs. And basically the reason for that is because the correcting element inside the baffle um, is placed in one particular spot and they want to get the secondary as far forward away from it as possible to uh, use that distance. Um, and so you only have about a quarter to a half a turn on the Edge HD, um, sometimes very difficult. In fact, a couple of them we had to send back in to, because we they had been maxed out. They couldn't be collimated any further. And uh, that's one of the difficulties with the Edge HD. And uh, th this thing took about, uh, the Edge HD took about 20 minutes longer to acclimate uh, where you see the heat spike. And part of that is the, the you can't really ventilate the baffle internally because the elements, the correcting element is in there. So when I'm cooling the scope, I remove the back end of it and just allow the baffle to ventilate as much as possible. Uh, it's a very low mass uh, scope, so it doesn't take up very much um, as far as, you know, cool down is concerned. It's a very forgiving scope. My deltas are pretty reasonable here. Um, so hope this gives you kind of an uh, idea, better idea on, on how it is and uh, SCT performs compared to the Edge HD. Like I said, don't worry about you know what people say on the internet that you got to have the Edge HD. It's a much better scope. It's not true. It really isn't. Um, I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily saying that any scope from this vintage 73, 74, uh, they're all perfect. My understanding is that there were like A, B, and C samples that had to be matched, and that was one of the things that Goff did. Bob Goff did. But this is unquestionably the best SCT I've ever seen as far as sample quality and I have no doubt at all that it'll perform next to any high quality Mac costing several times the cost. So hope you enjoy the video and have a great day.